welcome to this Crest webinar. I'm Caitlin Brown, Crest Product Manager at the British Science Association. And today I'm joined by Andy, who's an experienced Crest teacher and assessor. Um, and today we're going to be thinking about how Crest can be used now that um, schools are back, um, but under slightly different circumstances. So for context, Crest is one of our flagship education programmes and it is based around project-based learning, um, which is student-led um, and it is for students anywhere between the ages of 5 and 19. So Andy, thanks for joining us today. Um, would you like to just introduce yourself um, and tell us about uh, your experience of Crest and anything you think is good about the scheme? Uh, I'm a STEM coordinator and physics teacher at a, a, a busy forward-thinking secondary school near London. Um, I've been teaching for uh, over 20 years. Um, during that time, I've supported Crest on many occasions. Most of that time, uh, it's been uh, piecemeal as students have uh, shown an interest to become engaged with the, the whole project. Um, now I've changed that policy and I'm actively encouraging it. Now I've seen the benefits that it brings them. It, it stimulates, stimulates so many great skills, um, as well as giving the students an opportunity to develop their, um, their personal qualities that take them beyond the confines of the classroom. And this is really where Crest comes in as a, an excellent support for what we do in the schools. So Andy, obviously we're kind of living under the new normal at the moment. Um, the way school's running is quite... Uh, varied um, but obviously the support bubbles and things like that do you realistically think it's going to be feasible to run Crest particularly in this first term back at school? Absolutely I think uh, it's more important to to think about doing something like Crest now especially as the students have been away from uh, sort of formal education for so long um, it, it, it brings them right back into an academic environment that they have control over largely um, the projects they run are very creative and they're, they're in depth and they're driven by the student. Um, and their ability to take charge of what they're learning is being reinforced through Crest. And it's something that they've missed over the last six months. Um, I think pr primarily I've been seeing Crest uh, submissions coming in for gold awards. And actually it's incredible what the students have been provided with uh, throughout lockdown down as well as prior to that, that they've been concluding during the lockdown. Um, industry and university support, as well as the support of their teachers, has, has been amazing. And to run it now uh, and to support things back together is, I think, is it's just a, a fantastic opportunity for us. Um, I, I had some students before the lockdown that had been working on collecting data for an oscillations experiment. They got all the data in. Um, then we went into lockdown, but luckily they had the data and uh, we were able to coordinate um, their, them taking the project further forward. I'm still working with them on it now, but the idea that they can use video conferencing and internet uh, packages um, to coordinate everything is, is pretty incredible. But, you know, this mixed with what we can provide in, uh, in the real world is essential. Perfect timing. So it's great to hear that you think Crest will be doable under the current circumstances. Um, but what do you think the main kind of risks and issues might be? Um, and how do you think we might be able to mitigate those? I'm thinking in particular of, for example, you know, sharing equipment or using a lab and things like that. Some schools might be quite nervous about that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I think it's important to remember that um, we do risk assessments the whole time. It's no different from, from uh, that perspective we just have to include a few more things. It's very frustrating. Um, we, uh, at my school, we quarantine equipment for uh, uh, the, the, the amount of time that's um, uh, recommended in order to make sure that the, the virus has had a chance to die away if it was, um, if it was left on the surface. We also um, sterilize everything we could sterilize. Um, and the most frustrating thing for me personally is the ear group bubbles that we're um, operating with. I love having a lab full of students from the top to the bottom of the school, biggest and smallest, and um, because they, they feed off each other's energy and it's, uh, the enthusiasm is in, infectious. That's the kind of infection we want, right? Um, <laughs> not the other kind. Um, but it's actually not 
too much of a problem. Um, it's a, it is a strain for the teacher, but I think it's worth finding the time. I think the, it's largely for me personally, it's being aware of all the policies that I have to follow for myself and the one-way system around the school that have implemented, etc. Actually, the risk assessment is, is something that's easy to get used to. We shouldn't have to, but it, we can get used to it. I really like what you said about um, being uh, having the buzz in the classroom because that, that's that's very much how I feel about being in the office and things. Um, so for me personally, I I uh, I really like the kind of the, the noise around me. I concentrate a lot better when I have other people there who are also kind of working. Yeah, yeah. I think it's these casual comments that have been missed, um, and actually, it's a casual comment that often drives a particular procedure or. Uh, someone to follow an idea yeah. it's these if you formalize everything you kind of lose that a little bit so um that's what we're getting from bringing them in i did i did want to mention actually i follow the line of thought that um, running it with you group bubbles i sent out about six emails on monday and today for the different year groups so what i'm having to do is to run um stem sessions for a year group at a time and also allocate very specific resources to them and tell them what they're going to do. So I'm actually having to plan a lot more. And initially, I thought that would be a massive uh, problem. But the fact that I'm forced to do it is not a bad thing. And it does give me a really clear idea of where I'm going to direct the students' research. I know that that group can only use that. I know that the other group can only use something else. And there's a certain strength that comes from that because I don't have to worry about whether I'm depriving um, individuals of a chance to engage with another project because I can tell them that I've already planned for its use and they will get the another round. And there's no, there's no set of equipment that is less worthy than another. So actually, it's a little, little, bit, more, little bit more email traffic. Yeah. Than that. Okay. yeah. So, Andy, do you think there are any specific benefits, for example, for running Crest um, right now? So, obviously, some teachers might think, oh, you know, I'm incredibly time poor at the moment. I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch my students up. Um, but are there any specific benefits that you can think of to running Crest now? Well, I suppose in comparison to uh, the way I would normally run uh, STEM clubs and science activities, um, the advantage of Crest seems to me that it's student-led, which means that um, the, once the teacher has set the scene and then got things in place and encouraged the student to, to follow a particular line, the student, it's up to them to develop it. And the teacher just becomes an advisor and a mentor and reviews the work that's been completed rather than stands over them as they complete it, giving guidance and direction. Um, and so in that sense, it may be, again, the best time to do Crest now because of that aspect being a feature that's built in. You explained to them at the beginning that this is driven by them and their abilities, their interests, and their motivation. If they don't have it, you're not able to provide it because that's in the structure. And that takes a lot of pressure off as well. I think a lot of teachers um, actually do feel a certain amount of pressure to be providing all the time. And sometimes it can be hard just to just to step back and let them develop in their own way. And, but that's in, intrinsic to the Crest format. Um, I would also say that um, in terms of equipment, and I referred to uh, before, there's no reason why it has to be the most high-tech uh, laser interferometer that you're using with them. I mean, just the, uh, the way in which toothpaste coils up on a plate is uh, something that can be studied. And, you know, so give them the rein to, to find the equipment they want themselves. Takes even the equipment burden off of the department. That's a very good point, actually. And I should mention that we've actually highlighted some of our favourite um, Crest resources in our Crest library that are a little more... Um, uh, Less, less emphasis on the equipment use, I guess, and also um, have equipment that might not be necessarily need, need to be shared between students, which I think will also help. Um, and then actually, as you say, teachers can just let students take a look at those resources and see, see what, what interests them. So yeah, that's, that's a really good point, actually. 
So Andy, you're obviously a very experienced crest assessor as well as a crest teacher. So you've seen both sides of um, the project process. Um, do you have any thoughts about what makes a really good crest project? And also potentially, do you have any tips for teachers who might have students that are struggling with their crest projects um, at the moment due to you know the kind of the environment that they're having to work in, I guess? Yeah, I think um, a good CREST project has a, a real-world application. That's a key feature of it, that um, there's, a, there's a, a purpose to what's being um, explored. The, 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 the aim of the research is to come up with something that's, uh, that's uh, worthy of consideration in, within the context of what's being explored. Um, you know, if, if I had known what insight being a CREST assessor given me into the research talent and creativity of our young people, uh, I would have signed up the moment I qualified. I think taking ownership of the problems is essential that the students face. Let them take ownership of it themselves. Um, in fact, um, projects that have problems demonstrate the quality of um, uh, creative thought that the students have. The ability to overcome these problems is seen if you give them the chance to do it. Um, I think probably the most important aspect of the, the teacher role is to be encouraging and supportive and to, and to make them believe that they can overcome whatever they're experiencing. And really, it's a very gentle push. It's a nudge rather than uh, a set of instructions. And we have to trust that they can, they can do what they've set out to do and they have to trust it too. Uh, it's easy to be uh, negative when you're young and when you haven't had to face problems before and you look for a way to get support from people you rely, you, you're used to relying on. And this is a step towards uh, greater independence and it's, it's valuable. Step back, let them do it. Just a little push of encouragement and it'll be fine. That's really helpful advice, yeah. So thank you for listening to this Crest webinar and thank you Andy for joining us. You've been an excellent guest, so thanks for coming. Um, if you do have any questions, we will be uh, in the comments, so feel free to ask them there or alternatively you can email us at crest at britishscienceassociation.org um, and unfortunately Andy can't join us, but if there are lots of questions for him, I'm sure we can get him to answer them at a slightly later date. So um, thanks Andy and thank you everyone for listening.